October 6th, St. Bruno. St. Bruno was born in Cologne, Germany around the year 1030. While still quite young, he went to Rams, France, whose schools were famous. His keen intelligence and application to study earned the admiration of the archbishop there, who invited him to be director of all the educational establishments in the diocese. The new master had numerous pious disciples, among them the future Pope Urban II, who was the preacher of the First Crusade. St. Bruno was wise and very learned. He also knew Greek and Hebrew. He had a natural gift for poetry and an amiable disposition. These characteristics explain the enthusiasm roused by his comments on the sacred scriptures. His orthodox teaching and the fame of his sanctity raised up many enemies against him. The Archbishop of Rams was engaged in simony, that being the giving of ecclesiastical privileges in exchange for money. When St. Bruno realized this, he denounced him to the superior ecclesiastical authorities, and the unworthy prelate was called to answer for his misdeeds. The prelate's reply was to persecute St. Bruno. Bruno lost his post, his titles, and his goods, and he was exiled. Only in the year 1080, after a definitive sentence against the persecutor came from Rome, could St. Bruno return. He was invited to be the next Archbishop of Rome as successor to the bad prelate. Bruno, however, refused. Having come to understand the vanity of worldly things, he made a vow to abandon the world and serve God in solitude. In the year 1084, he, along with six companions, went to the Dauphin province province of France and asked his former student, St. Hugo de Chateauneuf, Bishop of Grenoble, to provide them an isolated place to live. St. Hugo conducted and installed them in a wild spot on the Alps called Chartreuse, amidst precipitous rocks and almost inaccessible. Bruno soon initiated the building of a hermitage, which was finished one year later and his chapel consecrated. The style of this small edifice served as a model for all Carthusians in France and other countries. The tranquil life of prayer and retirement of St. Bruno was short-lived. In the year 1090, a letter from Pope Urban II called him to Rome to assist the apostolic see. After passing some months in the papal court, Bruno again managed to retire to a hermitage in southern Italy where Count Robert Calabria had given him a large tract of land. It was there that in 1101 he serenely slept in the Lord. Some comments extracted from Professor Plinio's summary of St. Bruno's life. First, through this story, we can perceive one of the spiritual origins of the Crusades. For, the first crusade was preached by Pope Urban II, whose spiritual formation was given by St. Bruno. It is agreeable to consider that the spirit of silence and recollection can produce an action so vigorous and strong as the first crusade. Secondly, when St. Bruno was persecuted by the unworthy archbishop, he gave the example of what we should do today. One should defend orthodoxy as he did. The archbishop was guilty of simony. He was a man of bad principles. St. Bruno resisted him, denounced him, and stood up for the truth. He did not disobey in matters where the prelate still had a legitimate authority, but he did not make any concession in orthodoxy. When he was offered the archbishopric of Rome, we must understand its place in the world in his day. Rome was one of the most important cities in Europe at that time, and indeed the Cathedral of Rome was one of the most frequented in Christendom. It was a monument attracting the attention of the whole Catholic world. So in intent, the Archbishop of Rheims was an international figure. This is what St. Bruno turned down so that he could pray in solitude to our Lord daily. The result of his life is that he founded a religious order that is a model of solitude. The Carthusians live in greater solitude than even the Trappists. The later live in community in a monastery, but the former live alone, isolated in small hermitages or private cells, and meet together only for praying the holy office and meals. This solitude impressed the world and raised its admiration. It became one of the glories of the Catholic Church and spread throughout the whole world. 
On this feast day, let us ask St. Bruno for the love of recollection and humility, to be without pretensions, and to love to live unknown and ignored by others, to not be concerned about what others are thinking about us, to love spiritual solitude turned exclusively to our Lord Jesus Christ and Our Lady and the Holy Catholic Church when possible, and to be faithful to the grace and orthodoxy of the true Catholic doctrine, and to strive for the salvation of our souls so that we might go to heaven and see God face to face. We should also ask St. Bruno, says Professor Plino, to watch over the desolate situation of the Catholic Church and help restore her and in her the order that he founded, the Carthusian.